Hello, my name is Mr. Chipman. I teach AP Bio at Murray High School in Murray, Kentucky. And this is the night before the AP exam. And I'm hoping I can give you a couple of last minute helps. Um, one of the things that my students asked for in my class was for me to go over these basic variables again and to just talk about them because a lot of the questions on the exam and on the practice exams featured these basic variables. And so let's look at them together really quick. In a controlled experiment, you're always going to have these two variables, the independent variable and the dependent variable. There's a couple of ways to look at these. Um, the dependent variable is the variable that's being measured. And the independent variable is the variable that you are manipulating. So let's look at this particular experiment. In this experiment, they are doing an experiment um, to, I guess, determine the, uh, the effect of water on the growth of plants. And so notice what I did there. I created an, I created an experiment, right? And I stated it all in one sentence. More than likely in the prompt that you're going to read, there's going to be one sentence in that prompt that is going to give you both the independent and dependent variable in that sentence. Look for a sentence that reads something like that. In this experiment, researchers wanted to determine, and it's going to be blank, wanted to determine what? Well, they're determining determine how well seeds would grow based on, based on what? That's going to be the independent variable, based on the amount of water that was given to those seeds. And so all of a sudden, I'm given both variables in the experiment. What is being measured? Dependent. What is being manipulated? Independent. Now, how do you graph these, experiment, these uh, variables? The dependent variable is always going to be on the y-axis. So ask, ask yourself, what is being measured? That's going to be on the y. It's going to be going vertically, right? The x-axis is what is being manipulated, and that's going to be on the x, the independent variable on the x-axis. And so in this one, the amount of water that was given. It's going to be manipulated, and so you can say, you know, water is going to be blah, 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 or <clears throat> it could be the same amount of water was given over the course of 50 days or something, you know, I don't know. At that point, then days would be the uh, independent variable, but always, what are you measuring? Dependent, what is being, or what is that, those measurements being based off of? What is being manipulated? Independent variable. All right, so notice you also have a control here. Well, this control, we understand what a control group is. We've been learning about this for a long time, way before AP Bio. And you understand that in a controlled experiment, I have a group that is basically going to serve as a basis of comparison for the other groups. Without this group, I wouldn't be able to know whether or not water had an effect. Because if I watered everything, then I wouldn't know if without water, those plants would still grow. And so what the control does is it serves as a basis for comparison for me. Now there's going to be two kinds of control variables, lots and lots of fun things about these two control variables out there, lots of even teachers asking questions, what are these things? Well, let's demystify them. And let's demystify them in full view like that. <laughs> So there's the positive control. Well, the positive control um, is a control variable that introduces a known result into the experiment. Uh, what does that mean? So you're, it's still a basis for comparison, but you know what the result is going to be. I'll use Frederick Griffith's experiment here. In Frederick Griffith's experiment, he um, introduced different kinds of bacteria to mice. Frederick Griffith was a geneticist who studied uh, pneumonia. He was actually a field doctor for military. wasn't a geneticist, you know, till later. Um, and then he injected bacteria into mice that he knew caused pneumonia. Why would he do that? It's a known result. He's using that result as a basis for comparison for the rest of the experiment to, in order to test things that he didn't know. And so this is a positive control. So introducing a known result into the experiment to serve as a basis for comparison for the things that you don't know. A negative control is introducing no treatment into the experiment. And so back to our water experiment up here, this would be an example of a negative control because this is not given any treatment, right? Now you could, you could argue, well, we know what's going to happen when you don't water a plant. Maybe, but because it's not being treated with the, with the variable, is going to represent a negative control. And so here's another example. 
a lot of times you see this in like any sort of research, particularly like product research. So participants try a new shampoo, a new treatment shampoo in order to study hair loss, right? Which would be something that I'd be interested in. And so they uh, studied this shampoo. Well, these people over here are the control group. They're going to try a regular shampoo because we know that this regular shampoo, um, well, you, you could say they're trying a, that would be a, a positive control if you had something that had a known result, let's say a treatment with a known result. And I think that's a better way of thinking about it. Whereas in here, they're not given any treatment at all, just regular shampoo. And so this represents a treatment that's new that we don't know the result of. This is a regular shampoo, no treatment at all. So another way of thinking about it is the negative uh, control has no treatment, right? It's uh, no treatment with water, no treatment with shampoo. You could, you could even say that there's a negative control in this one, but I like to use this one as a positive control. And so what, how could we spin this one to be positive control? Well, let's say we had a shampoo that had known results and we wanted to, we have a new shampoo that we wanted to, like a, a treatment shampoo, a known treatment that had known results. Um, and so that would be a positive control. And so the idea is positive control introduces a treatment that has known results, negative control, no treatment at all, right? And so you're gonna be asked a question, promise it'll be on the exam either in the FRQs or in the multiple choice or in both where it's going to it's going to ask you well, what would be a positive control from the experiment um, or or it's going to be something along the lines of um, introduce one right it's going to ask you to to come up with something along those lines you know if, if you were to do this experiment suggest uh, a positive control for the experiment or a negative control for the experiment. And again, your, uh, there was a question um, about, I think it was on one of the previous exams about um, birds or something, and they introduced a known reaction, a, a bird that had a known reaction. And so that was a positive control in that experiment. All right, so let's talk about control variables. All right, so a control, well, so you have your independent variable. You have, in this particular example, uh, you are manipulating light color to determine plant height. And so the sentence might be, researchers were trying to determine the plant height based on the type of light color that it was grown in. So determine what plant height, that's what we're measuring, y-axis, based on what light color. This would be like a bar graph, right? You'd have the different colors at the bottom. You might even see like the spectrum at the bottom on the... Uh, you know, the different color spectrum and see the height in different, like a line maybe, or it could be a bar, either way. Control variables, these are things that are gonna remain constant. Uh, this is different than the control group. The control group is going to be the, the experimental group versus the control group. The experimental group is the treated group. The, the control group is the non-treated group, or in the case of the positive control, the known group. And so the control variables are the things that we're keeping the same throughout the experiment. Every plant gets the same soil. Every gets the same water, gets the same temperature, gets the same whatever. Uh, in this particular experiment, everybody stays or everybody takes showers with the same water. Everyone uses the same water temperature. You know, there's, there's certain things that you're not manipulating in this experiment. You're only trying to test the shampoo because if you have more than one thing that is different than, if you have more than one independent variable, then you don't know which variable is affecting the dependent variable. And so one of the uh, types of questions that I've seen also is, um, you know, something along the lines of suggest a different experimental approach or um, it's going to be worded differently than that, but it's basically uh, presenting you with a with a faulty experiment, and then you're going to have to say, okay, probably the reason that the experiment is faulty is because there's more than one variable being measured. And so that, that would be another thing that you're going to have to look at. This is not going to be the whole question. It's just going to be part of a question. See this a lot in the second FRQ, which is going to be the graphing uh, portion of the exam. And so, uh, again, just to go over these really quickly, just to, before we close the video, independent variable, manipulated, what you are changing as a researcher, dependent variable, what you're measuring, control variables, a thing that you're keeping the same, and the control groups, this is, what the, this is how you're going to base your experiment or the basis for comparison. It's either going to be a negative control, no treatment, 
or positive control, a known treatment. Good luck on the test, or I shouldn't say good luck. By this point in the year, hopefully you have prepared. Hopefully you are ready for this. Hopefully this video was helpful. If it was, give me a like down below. Give me a comment. Tell me if this helps you on the exam. Come here after the exam be like, hey, this was great. Thank you for this content. I really appreciate it. And I appreciate you for watching it. Hopefully you'll do well on the test tomorrow. Thank you.